I'm here, John Carney, your former NFL place kicker from the Saints, here to introduce you to Ian Book, our fourth round draft choice and future NFL quarterback for the Saints. The New Orleans Saints select Ian Book, quarterback, Notre Dame. What was preparing for the draft uh, like this year with COVID and all the restrictions? Uh, what was that like for you and, and some of the athletes that you were training with uh, in preparation for the draft? Yeah, it was definitely different this year with COVID. You know, I had to do everything virtually over Zoom. So that was obviously different. And then the combine was canceled. So really, uh, the only time you could see anybody from the NFL was the Senior Bowl or your Pro Day. So uh, those were two dates I was really looking forward to once our season ended after playing Alabama. And I um, feel like I've been going ever since. Um, you know, had a great meeting with the Saints early in the process. I was actually down at uh, MJP, which is Michael Johnson Performance, in McKinney, Texas, doing my training. And, um, you know, they were the second meeting I had, and I thought it went really well. And I've always thought of the Saints as a team I would love to play for. And honestly, Drew Brees has just been someone that, you know, I've looked up to for a super long time. And uh, he's someone I try to, you know, emulate my game for a little bit. And I tried, there's a few other QBs I really like, but he's always been somebody that um, he's definitely been my top three since I was a young kid. So here's a big question. So uh, much of your, your success last year was because of your signal caller uh, at Notre Dame. Uh, what are you going to do now that you're at the Saints and you don't have that same signal caller uh, signaling you the plays on the sideline um, that you were so dependent upon this past senior year? Yeah, I can't thank J.D. Carney enough. Um, just <laughs> honestly, I, I, I met J.D. I think it was four years ago now, or maybe even longer. Um, and he was just someone that came into our quarterback room at Notre Dame and did everything right. Like, never complained, did everything right, and he's always there helping people out. And I saw that and respected J.D. from the minute I met him. And just always, I mean, I still talk to him all the time, always reaching out, and he helped me a ton at Notre Dame. Here's another forecast for you, Ian. Uh, and you may want to check with your good buddy JD on this. Will Lutz might need a new holder. Are you willing to step mm. in as a holder for all pro Will Lutz place kicker? Definitely. No doubt about it. Um, you know, I got to hold. I do need to talk to JD because he was the master at that <laughs> and he was always working on it. So I need, so I need to talk to him, but I'll do anything to help out the team, and if they need somebody to do it, uh, 100%. You know, I, I held for one season at Notre Dame for the first time ever, but I'm, I'm already working on it now. You know, I'll work on it, and it's a way to get out in the field. It's a way to help, you know, this organization, and I can't I can't wait. I hope it is me. So that would be sweet. That would honestly be an unbelievable opportunity for me. So uh, let's go back to the Irish. Uh, best game, uh, your most memorable game, um, as a Notre Dame quarterback? The Clemson game, November 7th. Uh, just to be able to play the number one team, not every team gets that opportunity. And then to beat them, obviously, in overtime, a memory we'll all have forever. And we really, you know, uh, sketched our name into the history books that night and just made memories for a lifetime. And that, that was my favorite game. Really, truly was an amazing experience for everybody. Uh, you guys played so well. Uh, special teams, offense, defense, uh, especially when you guys got in overtime, you just took advantage of, of every opportunity and, and shut them down. Uh, what an amazing, amazing uh, experience for you and accomplishment. Well, Ian, uh, I just want to wish you the best of luck. Um, I know the Saints Nation, uh, the, the our, our fans, um, uh, Sean Payton, Mickey Loomis, uh, the team, very, very excited. Um, to welcome you onto the team. Uh, you're going to love it down there. And any questions about where to get uh, a swamp airboat ride or a drive through daiquiri shop or to listen to the blues, uh, JD and myself, we're happy to uh, give you those <laughs> those insights. I was going to, I was just about to ask you, I feel like there's, I need, I need a history lesson or something before I go out there on what to do and where to go and 
I just feel like that city is, you know, kind of funny because Notre Dame is so rich in tradition and history. And I feel like the Saints are the same thing. So I'm just going to all the all the teams that have rich, you know, tradition and history. So um, I got I got to do a few. Que- How about one question right now? And that would be if you could pick anywhere to go eat out there, where are you going? Make it a fun question. Because I heard the food is uh, the best in the world out there. Uh, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Um, and uh, the Commander's Palace is an amazing restaurant. Uh, there's a lot of history to it. Uh, so Commander's Palace is a great one. And so that's that's a definite. That's a definite. And you have to have the turtle soup when you go there. Make sure you have the turtle soup. Uh, it takes 24 hours for them to make this turtle soup. Uh, and then... Uh, Drago's as my number one restaurant Drago's D-R-A-G-O-S Tommy is the man to ask for ask for Tommy Uh, and you will have to have the char broiled oysters even if you don't like oysters you have to have the char broiled oysters they call it the best one bite of food in all of New Orleans Uh, those are my two favorites uh, and you're going to love it you're going to love the cuisine and you're going to love the music and you're going to love the people Right on. Thank you very much.